Okay, so, <clears throat> so we are looking at these uh, two versions of the monodromy theorem okay, and uh, trying to prove that they are equivalent. Okay. So, so basically, uh, so we have uh, a monodromy theorem uh, version 1 is uh, so, so, so the diagram is like this. Suppose you are having two points z0 and z1, and you have two paths uh, gamma and uh, eta. Uh, both are both paths. Both both paths are defined on a closed interval AB in the real line. Uh, and taking values in the complex numbers and suppose uh, and you assume that uh, you are given a function uh, f uh, analytic at uh, z0 okay. Suppose, uh, suppose the following things hold. Number one, uh, the the path gamma is homotopic to the path theta. Okay, gamma is homotopic to theta. Okay, which means that you can start with gamma, and then you can continuously deform gamma into uh, see sequence of uh, 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 a sequence of intermediate paths which uh, lead from gamma to neta okay like this uh, so that is gamma is homotopic neta and then number 2 f can be analytically continued uh, not only on gamma but on each of the intermediate paths in the homotopy including uh, neta. So, f can be analytically continued continued along any path in the homotopy. In other, so the homotopy is given by uh, continuous uh, succession of paths, uh, which start at gamma and end at neta. Okay, and the assumption is f, the function f, which is analytic at z0, can be analytically continued along each of these paths that occur in the homotopy. So another way of saying this is, as I had said earlier, there is no obstruction to the analytic uh, continuation of f along any intermediate path. Okay, all these intermediate paths you can you can uh, analytically continue f okay so you must remember that uh, first of all uh, uh, what we are assuming is that along each path f can be analytically continued okay in other words it it means that there exists uh, some analytic continuation of f along each path but then i already told you in the earlier lectures lecture that you know if you have a path Okay, and if you have a function analytic function at the starting point, then the analytic continuation of f along that path is unique. We have already seen this. In other words, what this means is that this uh, this uh, these hypotheses mean that uh, 
along each path there is only one analytic continuation of f there is only one analytic continuation possible on each path and it is there okay but the only question that the monodromy theorem answers is what happens after you analytically continue f along each path what is the function you get at the other end point z1 and the monodromy theorem says that all the functions you are going to get after analytic continuation along any path uh, at uh, z1 they are all going to be one and the same okay uh, then the result of analytic continuation continuation of f along any of these any of the paths at z1 is the same okay. So, you analytically continue this function f along any path it, it includes the starting path gamma the ending path nita and any path in between okay and when you come to the point z1 the uh, function that you will get the analytic function that you will get that will be one and the same that is what the monotromy theorem says okay. So, to say it in short if you analytically continue a function along two homotopic paths then the result of the analytic continuation is going to be this same at the end point you will get the whatever analytic function you get by continuing along one path it will be the same as the analytic function you will get by continuing along another path the only requirement is that these two paths should be homotopic to one another okay and of course we have assumed that through every intermediate path in the homotopy analytic continuation exists okay so it's a it's a it's a it's a kind of statement which, which which assumes existence and gives uniqueness okay so it assumes the existence of analytic continuations on uh, on all these paths intermediate paths okay the starting function is the same the, the analytic function you are starting with at the uh, uh, starting point is the same and what it gives is the uniqueness of the analytic function that you will get at the ending point okay that is a monotomy theorem so this is version 1 okay and then what is version 2 uh, so what is version 2 version 2 is it is a it is a following statement suppose you have a uh, suppose you have a function element okay namely consisting of a pair of an analytic function and a domain on which it is defined then if you take then for any such pair you have two we, we have defined two sets one set is called the uh, maximal analytic extension of the given function okay it is called it is called the uh, region of maximal direct analytic continuation of the given function okay and then there is another set which is called the region of regularity of the given analytic function or which is also called the region of uh, indirect analytic continuation of the given function and uh, what monodromy uh, and we have already seen examples that you know the region of uh, uh, regularity okay that is the region of indirect analytic continuation of a given analytic function can be bigger strictly bigger than its region uh, of maximal direct analytic continuation for example the take any principal branch of the log take the principal branch of the logarithm then uh, the region of maximal analytic continuation will be the slit plane you will have to throw out the negative real axis whereas if you take the region of regularity it will be the punctured plane so the region of regularity is bigger than the region of uh, maximal direct analytic continuation in the sense that the region of regularity also includes points on the negative real axis and the reason is because across points along the negative real axis you can continue the log function uh, any branch of the logarithm uh, in an analytic way an analytic continuation exists along across any uh, path which goes through points on the negative real axis okay so what the monotromy theorem version 2 says is that it gives you a situation when you can say that uh, the region of maximal direct analytic continuation is equal to the region of regularity 
that is the region of maximal direct analytic continuation is equal to the region of uh, the, the, the domain of maximal analytic continuation is equal to the domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation they are one and the same and the answer is that it will happen when the domain of uh, maximal indirect analytic continuation namely the domain of regularity is simply connected ok. So, let me state that uh, uh, when the uh, domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation it equals the domain of maximal direct analytic continuation when the domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation is simply connected then that domain also becomes the domain of maximal direct analytic continuation ok that is the that is version 2 of the monotomy theory ok and now what I want to say is that uh, these two are these two versions are equivalent and then I will prove this version. So, I will also prove that they are equivalent so it means I would also have proved this version. So, let us first uh, let us first look at the proof of well um, uh, yeah let us uh, let us assume version 1 and prove version 2. So, what we will do is we have assumed the monodromy theorem version 1 ok and we will prove version 2 ok. So, what so you are trying to prove version 2 2 that means you have, you have the hypothesis of version 2 which means that you assume you are assuming that you have a function whose domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation is simply connected. So, let f uh, uh, let u comma f be a function element. Uh, uh, f that is f is f is analytic on the domain u with uh, domain with uh, domain of maximal indirect analy analytic continuation analytic continuation which I have also earlier called as a domain of regularity is uh, V 2 is simply connected is simply connected. So, there is this uh, I do not know what notation I used probably I used v2 alright. So, v2 is the uh, is the is the domain of regularity of f namely uh, uh, see remember v2 is uh, it is the union of all those points in the complex plane such that there is a path from a point in u to that point along which f can be analytically continued. So, you know v2 so the diagram is something like this you have so this is uh, if you want this is u and this is the function f it is defined on u and if I if when do I put a point z in the complex plane when do I put it in v2 if you can find a point in uh, u z0 and you are able to find a path gamma from z0 to z and you are also able to analytically continue f along that path to z all such z you put in the set v2 ok. And it is clear that you know I have already told you that whenever a function is analytic on a domain inside that domain if there is any path then you can always analytically continue f that is trivial because you, you will get the trivial analytic continuation alright. Uh, an analytic function can always be continued to any point in its domain ok and that will be just trivial analytic continuation 
you are actually getting back the same function okay but the whole point about indirect analytic continuation is that you might go around a loop and you might end up with a new function like what happens if you go around the origin once and start with the branch of the logarithm you will end up with the next branch of the logarithm okay so the point is that it's always trivial that if you have a <coughs> analytic function on a domain if there is a path inside that domain on that path it can always be analytically continued namely uh, it it will be you will get back the same function at every point on the path all right but the question is you are if you are able to find a path that goes out of the domain along which you can still continue the function all those terminal points of all such paths you put together you get another set v2 and that turns out to be again open and connected okay uh, and therefore it becomes a domain and this is called the domain of regularity so v2 is the domain of regularity of f okay and uh, the the point that is given to you is that v2 is simply connected all right so you know so let so let me write let me just re write down what i said v2 is a set of all z in c says that there exists z not belonging to you and a path gamma from z not to z along with along which uh, f can be continued analytically this is uh, this is the definition of v2 and v2 by this definition itself I, we checked last time it is very easy to check that v2 is both open and connected so it is a domain v2 v2 contains u and is open connected uh, hence a domain and that is the domain of regularity and what is given is that v2 is simply connected. it is given that v2 is simply connected what do i have to prove i have to prove that v2 is equal to v1 which is the domain of maximal uh, analytic extension okay i have to prove v2 is equal to v1 see we also define v1 uh, to be the domain of maximal direct analytic extension namely it is the largest open subset of open connected subset of c where uh, uh, the function f can be directly analytically continued to give an analytic function okay and we if we call that as v1 we want to show v1 is equal to v2 okay so uh, of course uh, uh, so let me but you know it's it's uh, it's obvious that v1 is contained in v2 right because uh, it's obvious that v v1 is contained in v2 because v1 contains a direct analytic extension of uh, f and you know a direct analytic continuation is also an indirect analytic continuation you can treat that also as an indirect uh, uh, analytic continuation namely the trivial analytic continuation all right so uh, let v1 comma g1 be the uh, be the be the pair uh, 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 with be the function element be the function element with uh, v1 uh, the maximal direct analytic extension uh, uh, the 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 domain of the domain of maximal direct analytic extension or continuation of f and g1 the extended function so you know that means v1 is a domain v1 contains uh, u g1 is analytic on v1 g1 restricted to u is the same as f okay it's a direct analytic continuation of f all right and v1 is the largest possible domain it is the largest possible domain to which you can you can extend f all right so so let me write that down v1 contains u uh, uh, is uh, the largest domain in 
the complex plane such that uh, G1 restricted to u is equal to f okay this is a, this is the uh, maximal domain of direct analytic extension or continuation of f okay and of course you know since g1 extends f it's very clear that v1 is contained in v2 okay clearly v1 is contained in v2 why because you see uh, after all uh, 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 you know any if you take any point in v1 okay then that that point in v1 is connected to u by a path okay that's because you know uh, uh, v see any two points of v1 are connected by a path why because v1 is a domain it's an open connected set and an open connected set is also path connected okay an open connected set is path connected so v1 is a open connected set therefore any two points of v1 are connected by a path therefore if you take a point of v1 and a point of u they are of course connected by a path inside v1 okay now along that path at the starting at, at the point of u you have the function f which is g1 restricted to u and out at the uh, uh, but through that path g1 is defined so you can think of g1 as a direct analytic continuation of f along that path okay so what it means is that you can analytically continue along any path uh, uh, from a point in u to a, a point in v1 and the analytic continuation of f is just given by this function g1 therefore all these points in v1 will also get in will also be points in v2 okay the only problem the only point with v2 is that it might contain points at which you will not be able to directly analytically continue f okay but at which you may be able to only indirectly analytically continue f okay that is why v2 could be bigger than v1 okay so certainly v1 contains v2 all right now what we are what the monotromy theorem version 2 says is that if v2 is simply connected then v1 has to be equal to v2 that is what it says we are given that v2 is simply connected and you have to show v v2 is equal to v1 so you have to show that v2 is contained in v1 okay we need to show v2 is equal to v1 you have to show that all right that is what you will have to show. So how do you do that it is pretty easy so what you do is you know what you do is uh, uh, so what we do is what, see if v2 is uh, uh, e going to be equal to v1 then uh, at every point of v2 also you can directly analytically extend f and that extension is going to be g1 because g1 is a maximal analytic direct analytic extension of f to the subset uh, to this largest possible domain v1 okay. So in other words you know what is happening what is happening is that uh, v2 uh, in v2 what is happening is you are getting various points to which you can directly you can indirectly analytically continue f along paths but you do not know what the function is that you are going to get at the end of the path okay but trying to show v2 equal to v1 is the same as trying to show that even after you analytically continue it the function end function you are going to get is actually g1 which is just a direct extension of f okay you are trying to show that for every point z in v2 okay whenever you have a point z in v2 whenever you uh, which means that you have a path from a point in u to that point whenever you analytically continue f what are you going to get you are going to get just g1 you are not going to get anything else that is what you are trying to show. So what we will do is we will we'll define a new function so uh, so you know the, the picture is something like this you have u of course you know the way I am drawing the pictures I am trying I am always drawing bounded domains. I am, I am drawing simply connected bounded domains okay but uh, they need not be like that what is so if this 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 picture is only to help you to think all right but it's you should not take it uh, to be accurate all right so the, the sequence of things is uh, that you have u uh, 
the set on which f is defined the domain on which f is defined that is contained inside uh, uh, v1 that is the uh, you know maximal domain to which you can extend f and the maximal extension is g1 okay and then there is uh, v2 and v2 consists of all those points to which you can analytically continue f you know that you can analytically continue f but you do not know what is the function you are going to get and the claim is that if v2 is simply connected then v1 is the same as v2 that is the claim. So, what you do is you do the following thing take a point z in v2 by definition there is a point z0 in u and there is a path let me call this path as gamma sub z alright and there exists an analytic continuation of f. So, I start with f here and I get a function f sub z okay. So, now uh, define uh, 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 g2 from v2 to c by g2 of z g2 of uh, uh, by g2 of uh, z is equal to f z of z. So, look at this definition look at this definition it is a very clever definition but uh, anyway a very simple definition the definition is very simple you give me a point z of v2 small z in v2 then by definition there is a path which ends at z starts at a point of u say z0 and along that path your f can be analytically continued and you know once you know we already know that once you can analytically continue f along a path then the analytic continuation is unique as far as that path fixed path is concerned or along the same path you cannot get two different analytic continuations there is a uniqueness of analytic continuation along a given path okay that we have already seen. So, the ending function that you are going to get is going to be some function I am calling that function as f sub z because it is at the end point z alright and my g, what is g2 of z it is f sub z of z I am I am defining a function like this okay this function is a well defined function there is no problem about it is well definedness uh, why. So, here is where the simply connected hypothesis will come see the point is this z is connected to z0 by a path uh, gamma sub z ok. Now, what you must understand is you know I could have taken uh, instead of taking z0 I could have taken z1 ok. So, so let me draw it so that I can you know I can draw uh, so instead of z0 I could have taken uh, z1 so this is z0 I could have taken z1 you know and I could have gotten another path and this path well I can call it as neta z right. So, try to understand what is happening uh, when I so, this is the uh, this is the uh, this is where I am trying to say that uh, this function g2 is well defined ok. I am trying to say that g2 is well defined see what I said earlier was f sub z is well defined f sub uh, z is well defined because it is the analytic continuation of f along the fixed path gamma gamma sub z ok which starts at z0 which is a point of view. But then for the same z I might have another point z1 in u I may have another path starting neta z starting from z1 and ending at the same z along which also f can be analytically continued it can happen after all it can happen. And as far as the as far as the path neta sub z is concerned if I continue the same f along neta sub z I might end up with another uh, function ok that tells me that this definition seemingly is not well defined because this is f sub z de depending uh, if we take the path gamma sub z and this also equal to uh, well if you if you go along uh, the path neta sub z you might get some uh, let, let me call it, give some other name to it g sub z of z if we go if we take 
the path theta subset okay it can happen and if if you want g2 of z to be well defined these two have to be the same otherwise it is not well defined okay these two have to be the same otherwise it is not well defined. Now the point is that you know well the point is you know z0 and z1 they belong to u anyway okay. So uh, what you can do is you can connect z0 to z1 by a path delta okay you can connect z0 to z1 uh, I think delta is not a very good uh, uh, let me use uh, uh, some other symbol let me use lambda okay. So you connect z0 to z1 by a path lambda okay and now watch I start with f along lambda take the trivial analytic continuation because after all lambda is a path inside u and along a path inside u you can always take the trivial analytic continuation which means you you are your analytic continuation is the same function f along each point of the path that means along each point of the path you are simply writing the power series of the same function f uh, at centered at that point you have the analytic you have the trivial analytic continuation of f along lambda okay followed by the analytic continuation starting with f at z1 and leading to gz along neta z okay so if you put them together you will get the analytic continuation of f to gz along the path which is gotten by lambda followed by neta sub z all right on the other hand you also have the analytic continuation fz which of f starting at the point z0 via the path gamma sub z all right now you see the path lambda followed by neta z is homotopic to the path followed to the path gamma z that is because both are because both points end points are uh, inside v2 which is simply connected and both paths start at uh, z0 and end at uh, z1 see what is the property of a simply connected uh, region if you have two points any two paths any two paths starting at these two points uh, starting at uh, a fixed point and ending at a fixed point okay any two paths are homotopic to each other okay therefore uh, what will happen is that the path lambda followed by neta z is homotopic to gamma z but now I have assumed Monromy theorem version 1 which says that whenever you have two paths which are homotopic to each other and along all of the intermediate paths the uh, there is no obstruction to uh, analytic continuation along see both these paths the region between the paths is, is a region inside v2 and inside v2 there is no obstruction to analytic continuation because v2 consists of all those points where you can analytically continue f okay. So both conditions of the first monodromy theorem first version uh, are satisfied okay so that will tell you that fz is equal to gz you will get fz equal to gz just because of version 1 okay so that will tell you that g2 is well defined okay so let me write this connect uh, uh, lambda here uh, connect z0 to z1 to sorry z0 to yeah z0 to z1 by a path lambda in u then uh, gamma z is homotopic to lambda neta z by lambda neta z I mean lambda followed by neta z concatenation of two paths to give a new path okay. Also uh, 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 the, the homotopy also any uh, also a homotopy can be found from comma z to lambda neta z uh, via uh, such that each intermediate path is in v2 
v 2 along which analytic continuation of f exists. So, you see I can find I want a homotopy between gamma followed by eta z and f. So, I can find intermediate paths like this and all the intermediate paths are lying in v 2 ok. Why, why am I getting this homotopy because v 2 is simply connected ok. Since, so here is where v 2 is simply connected is used. So, this is where I am using simple connectedness of V2. Any two paths starting at the same point and ending at the same point are homotopic to one another for points and paths lying in a simply connected domain, ok. So, because of simple connectedness of V2, these two are homotopic and the and the homotopy can be chosen in such a way that every intermediate path is also lying inside V2, but what is the property of V2? any point along any point uh, for all points in V 2 you can always uh, you have indirect analytic continuations. So, along all the intermediate paths of this homotopy ok also you will have indirect analytic continuations. So, there is no obstruction to analytic continuation of f along each of these paths. So, you know all the conditions of version monotromy theorem version 1 are satisfied and therefore, what this will tell you is that f z is equal to g z. So, let me write that down. Uh, so, maybe I will draw a line like this. Thus, all conditions, all hypothesis of uh, uh, version 1 of the monodromy theorem. So, g z will be equal to f z, these two functions are the same ok. So, what, what this tells you is that g 2 is well defined. So, I have managed to define a function g 2 ok. The def so, let me again emphasize you give me a point in v 2 I am going to define a function I am going to define a function <coughs> uh, I am going to define a value at that point and what is the value I define I do the following thing since it is a point in v 2 I can choose a point of v 1 I mean I can choose a point of u and a path along starting from that point and continuing uh, and I continue f analytically I can continue f analytically along that path and I will get a new function at z I take that function take its value at z I call the new function as f sub z I take its value at z that is how I am defining g 2 the only problem is that I could have gotten analytic continuation along some other path starting from some other point in u and it is because of the simply connectedness and of v 2 and it is because of the assumption of the first monotromy theorem the first version of the monotromy theorem that I am able to show that g 2 is well defined ok. Now, g 2 is well defined g 2 is analytic is very easy because g 2 in a neighborhood of the point z ok g 2 is simply uh, the analytic function f z f z is of course, an analytic function ok at z. So, g 2 is just f in a neighborhood of z ok. So, g 2 is locally analytic and therefore, it is analytic because analyticity is a local property to check that a function is analytic you have to just check that at every point it is analytic ok. So, since g 2 uh, coincides with an analytic function locally it is analytic ok. So, let me write that since g 2 coincides with the analytic function f z 
in a neighborhood of z g 2 will be analytic. Okay. So, what you must understand is probably this also requires uh, uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of more thought namely what you must understand is you know uh, so so let me draw one more diagram so that you know you really understand what's going on so you know this is so this is my u then i have this uh, v1 on v1 i have this uh, f which is defined here extending to the maximal extension extension g1 and then i have this v2 <coughs> which is assumed to be simply connected you see I, I take a point z at this point uh, I define a g 2 to be f z g 2 of z to be f of f z of z this is my definition and how did I get that f z I start with the point z not here I chose a path lambda uh, I mean gamma sub z along which f can be analytically continued and at this point when I reach this point z I get a new function analytic function locally there I call that as f sub z and take I take its value at z, uh, at z okay. Now what I want you to understand is well if you take a small if you take this neighborhood where this f sub small z is defined that will be some disc okay surrounding the point z. So suppose this is a disc where you know f sub at z is defined all right suppose this is certainly f sub z is an, is an analytic function at z so it is going to live in it is going to be analytic in a disk surrounding z now what what i am trying to tell you is you choose any other point uh, uh, z prime in this disk okay then the g2 at z prime will be the same as f z at z prime okay g2 of at z prime will be the same as f z uh, at z prime okay and why is that so so i mean that's the claim i'm making here g2 coincides with f z in a neighborhood of z okay so so what's going to happen so the situation is going to be that you know i'm going to have another point uh, uh, say z2 which is a point of u okay and z prime is here all right and you know by definition z prime uh, is in this disk where fz is defined but the point is z prime is in v2 so which means that there is a point of u z2 and then there is a path like this uh, from z2 along which f can be analytically continued and you know this path can be called something uh, 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 well let me use something uh, so let me use capital gamma capital gamma of gamma sub z prime. So, capital gamma sub z prime is a path starting from a point z 2 in u along which I continue f and then I get uh, a certain function uh, f sub z prime whose value at z prime is what I have defined g 2 of z to be z prime to be. So, g 2 of z prime is just f sub z prime of at z prime where f sub z where f sub z prime is the analytic continuation of f along capital gamma sub z prime from z2 in u to z prime this is how I have defined my g2 my claim is this f z prime is the same as f z in other words I am saying g 2 is always the analytic function f z is only one function that is the claim and uh, uh, what is the what is the reason for that the reason for that is very very simple see you see uh, uh, the reason is you know I do the following thing. Uh, you see I connect if you want I am I, I am in a disk so you know with z is the center z 
set prime is another point on the disc I can actually take a radial line like this I can take a line from z to z prime okay along z to z prime I can analytically continue fz trivially okay and now if I take this point from z0 uh, if I take this path starting with z0 along gamma sub z and follow it by this line from z to z prime I will get a path from z0 to z prime okay and along that path if I analytically continue I will only get uh, uh, f z prime because after all uh, I mean I will only get f z because after all I started with f at z0 I analytically continue it along gamma z I ended up I ended up at z when I ended up at z I got f z okay when I move along this radial line and come to z prime I am st still keeping the same I am simply trivially analytically extending uh, the f z at z to f z at z prime because that radial line is in that disc where f z is well defined and wherever a function is well defined I can always I always have trivial analytic extension trivial analytic continuation. So, from z0 I have another path to z prime along which my analytic continuation gives rise to fz but I have already proved that if you take two different paths starting from two different points of u and you analytically continue f and you end up at a particular point the function you get is the same okay. So, the moral of the story is that by connecting z to z prime by a trivial path and by taking a trivial analytic continuation of uh, f sub z along that along that radial line okay and putting these two th things together you can see that f z prime is the same as f z okay but f z prime is equal to f z they are the same okay and therefore so this implies that g2 uh, is equal to fz in a neighborhood of z in a disc surrounding z okay that is the statement I have made here since g2 coincides with the analytic function fz in a neighborhood of z g2 is analytic it is locally analytic so it is analytic at every point z g2 is analytic that is all. So, I have managed to produce a global function on v2 which is analytic and what is that function restricted to u that function restricted to u is just f that function restricted to u is f. So, what you have proved is that you have this global analytic function v2 g2 which is defined on v2 and which is directly extending your analytic function f on u. So, it proves that v2 uh, also is contained in v1 it tells you that v2 comma g2 is a direct analytic continuation of u comma f. So, it means that v2 uh, and v1 is supposed to be the domain of maximal direct analytic continuation. So, v2 has to be contained in v1 we already proved v1 is contained in v2. So, you get v1 equal to v2 and we get the external analytic function to be g2 but g2 is but g2 is what g2 has to then be equal to g1 okay. So, so that 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 finishes the proof that uh, version 1 implies version 2 right.